Hi, welcome. I'm, I'm Stacy, Education Program Director here at Golden Artist Colors. Thank you for joining us here in our workshop space in New Berlin, New York, where we're going to go over um, uh, skins today. We're going to talk about acrylic skins, and we're going to look at them in 2D and 3D applications. I am joined here today with Todd, our producer, as well as Allison, our community manager, and Kathy, our technical um, our material specialist who will help you with technical questions. So feel free to put your questions in the comments, um, whatever platform you're on, and we will try to get to those. And I will also pause during this demo um, to address those questions if you have any that I can answer. Anyway, welcome. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, you can also let us know where you're from. That's always fun. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some examples of skins and talk about what they are. Um, after that, we will look at um, creating some 2D skins and some 3D skins, and hopefully that will get you going and give you some, some creative ideas to start making work with if you haven't um, ever worked with skins before. And if you have done this before, we have, um, maybe we'll show you some new things, and, and that should be a lot of fun. Okay, so um, skins. This piece right here is just an example we put together with some, some skins that we had made. Um, just to show you some of the possibilities. What a skin is, um, a skin is a, an acrylic film, a dried acrylic film that is not bound to a substrate. So this is an example of an acrylic film that is made from fiber paste, and it's got a little wash of watercolor and a little wash of um, acrylic paint on that fiber paste. And this is not bound to any substrate. It's not on a canvas. It's not on... Um, you know, a panel or anything like that, not on paper. I can cut it. I can manipulate this in different ways than I might if I had this material bound to, say, a panel or a canvas. Now, the nice thing about this is, is if I go to use this as a collage element in my work, I am putting acrylic paint back into my painting. It is something that is going to have all the light fast and stability properties of an acrylic paint. Um, so all the positives that you would look for in a professional paint you will have in your acrylic skins. So it's not going to give you the same kind of uh, concerns that you might have if you're collaging with, say, some papers from magazines or found objects, which are fun too. But this, this offers that stability. And there's a lot of creative potential here. So let's go ahead and look at some examples and get started. So here's one. Um, this has multiple skins that are layered to create this. Some are very coarse, like there's a little piece here of coarse alumina. Here I have an iridescent and interference paint mix. I believe those were fluids. This has a transparent, oops, a little string in there, a translucent uh, piece here created um, with um, clear tar gel and some heavy body paint. Um, this is a fluid acrylic. And in here, you have some more iridescent interference mixtures. You can see that green kind of popping out of that, that sort of pearlescent color there. And, you know, all of these were, were just sort of made on plastic sheeting that would then release once that layer has dried. The plastic sheeting that we recommend is a polyethylene plastic. If you don't know if your plastic that you have around the house is that type, we just recommend you test it with a little paint, let it dry. Sometimes it takes several days to fully dry and release, depending on the humidity in your environment. But once that's dry, if it's the right type of plastic, it should just peel off. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Again, if you're not sure, just do a test. Most acrylics will work. Um, there's a few that you may want to um, avoid. Anything that is very thin or very matte uh, could be uh, either too delicate to peel up or very brittle and possibly break. Uh, some pastes, like our molding paste and our fiber paste, they work really well. Uh, but you get into crackle paste, which is designed to separate and crackle, it would not work for this application unless there were special modifications made, like building more flexible layers beneath. Those kinds of questions we'll be happy to take offline if you have any technical questions like that. And just keep in mind, if there's something we don't go over here, we can always answer your questions at help at goldenpaints.com. Um, we, we do that all the time, and it's our absolute pleasure. So I made some skins ahead of time just to show you some, and then we'll make a few together. Um, Two-dimensional skins, we're 
are pretty easy to make. Um, we're using actually page protectors. We have found that that is a plastic that will release. Um, it, is, it is good enough. It works for us. And I have some different products here to just show you maybe some, some examples that might stimulate some ideas for you in your studio. Um, this one here is actually just a knifed out uh, big heaping of the gold mica flake. The gold mica flake, when I open this, you'll see that it's actually kind of white on the inside here. The, the gel that binds this product uh, is white when wet. And once it dries, it clarifies like this. You can actually extend this by mixing it with another clear gel, like a soft gel or a clear tar gel. If you want the mica flakes to be more dispersed, if you want it to look like it does as it comes out in the container, you'll have to put it on a little thicker uh, because those pieces are quite big. But that gel will clarify as it dries, and it's very flexible. So as I go to peel this off, you're going to notice two things. You're, you're going to see that thin layer right here where that gel is quite thin, and those pieces are suspended in that. And as it gets thicker, it gets more opaque. But you'll also notice that in here, I'm not lifting. Okay, if you ever peel up your skin and you find that this is starting to happen, your skin needs more time to dry and cure. This is a thicker layer, this is a thinner layer. The water that evaporates from this gel as it's drying only has one direction to go, and that's up. Since it's sitting on plastic, it can't evaporate from the back, so you have to sometimes give it a little more time than you might if you were painting on an absorbent surface like paper or a canvas. So keep that in mind. This right here is simply heavy body paint. This is our uh, teal heavy body, and it, all I did was put down um, just a pile of that paint, something like this, and then I took a soft rubber tool and just did some design like this. And as I pulled that paint down, um, it created this texture. Now this actually is a little bit thinner than that micaceous um, piece, that gold mica, and I can actually lift this up. And as I lift this up, you're going to see some areas are very, very thin. That's fine. I can use that. But when I pull it off the plastic, I will want to be careful that I don't fold it underneath. Oops, got paint on me. That I don't fold it onto itself. Um, if I fold it onto itself, what can happen is it can stick. Um, Acrylics like acrylics, they'll want to grab and stick to itself. So you have to really watch that when you're working um, with these skins. Some tricks to keeping it from doing that um, is to sort of keep them on the plastic, possibly store them on the plastic until you're ready to use them. Um, and we'll go ahead and adhere this a little later so I can show you how to do that um, so you can understand that piece. But sticking them down is pretty basic. Um, you can cut these up also. Um, so that's a lot of fun. It doesn't have to stay like that. All right, another one I made for you today um, was a fiber paste piece. Uh, fiber paste kind of looks like a pulpy handmade watercolor. What's nice about this is, whoops, a little blown out there, is you can stain this. Um, and I have an example where I actually did a piece like this, mixed it with uh, the high flow black, um, and created a um, a skin like that, and it really has a different effect. Um, fiber paste here, I'll show you what it looks like wet. Um, it's really, I'm going to say paste it really, this one really feels pasty, kind of short in its rheology, like that, right? It goes on, you just knife it right onto that, that plastic, and it'll dry like this. So we can take a look at that in a little bit on another example. This one, I took quinacridone magenta fluid, and I mixed it, really just a tiny bit of it, with some clear tar gel. Clear tar gel is really sort of, uh, has a long rheology. It's really like honey. It's very um, sticky, and it looks like this, <laughs> really, when you pull it out. And I'll do a mixture of this in a moment to show you. But uh, one reason this is a really a particularly nice gel for skins is it's extremely flexible um, and really just has a sort of resinous feeling to it um, that, that makes it a nice choice for skins. Um, another one 
that has a really different effect um, is this hot, this, um, excuse me, this soft gel mat. I wanted to grab the container for you. Soft gel mat. One thing to know is that when you're working with matte products, the surface facing up as it dries will be matte, but as you peel that product up from the plastic, you'll notice that the underside will be glossy. So in a way, you can think of this as a two-for-one special. If I use a matte product, I can have the option of using this side as a glossy, um, as a glossy piece in my work, or I can use this side for a matte effect. Now, if you notice, this one's a little different. Um, this skin actually has an inclusion. We put a little piece of cheesecloth in this skin because if you are creating with skins and you're using them, say, for a sculptural application and not necessarily a collage, they tend to stretch. You know, this is a material that has some give. Even if they're thick and you build lots of layers, they will want to stretch with gravity and anything that's sort of pulling or poking at the skin. What the cloth does is it acts like, a, um, like an armature or it gives it a little bit more of a, a strength, holds the form a little bit, keeps it from stretching quite as much. So this inclusion will strengthen that, that layer, give it a little bit more of a cloth-like function in your work. It also could be added as a creative choice. So if it's something I just wanted for aesthetic um, appeal, I can add inclusions into this. Um, and I will make one of these too shortly. You can also just brush out your paint. Um, the heavy body and fluid work the best. Our so flat paint can work, but it's a little thin and a little brittle because of all the matting solids. Um, the high flow is, is really much too thin, but can be added to other paints and mediums and work. Now this heavy body was put on really thin, and what I, I will t caution you um, with really thin uh, skins and applica applications like this, they're very, very delicate. So, you know, you have to be careful lifting them up. But the nice part about it is it almost feels like I'm working with um, a piece of gold leaf. It's just really lovely. And when I go to put that on a surface, whatever texture I have underneath, I can get to rise because this is so thin, it will actually go into the pockets of that texture when I adhere it and collage with it. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a couple of 2D skins, and then we'll move on to 3D skins. Okay. Are there any questions while I set up for the, the demonstration? Um, Kathy is just really <laughs> fast when it comes to answering questions, but could you um, talk again about the plastic that you're using? Yes. Are some that are better than others? Yes, okay. So... You know, acrylics actually will adhere to some plastics. Um, you can use plexiglass um, and plastics like that actually as a substrate. Acrylics will permanently bond to them. But then a polyethylene plastic um, is quite the opposite. The acrylics will want to lift from that. Um, when you are at home in your studio, you may not know what plastic you have. So we do recommend that you do some tests first. I've actually been able to pull skins from a Walgreens bag, um, from a trash bag, you know, there's all kinds of things in your home that could work, but you won't know until you test it. And what we're using right here is actually a page protector, something that you'd see at a, at a common, you know, office supply store. And we just discovered that, hey, they're the, the right kind of plastic for the, for the job. So um, if you don't know and you happen to go to a hardware store, you can identify the plastic that, say, a, a drop cloth for a construction is made out of if you look at the packaging or you do a little research. Sometimes we, we are actually able to identify polyethylene and buy it in rolls. Um, so that is an option if you're going to be using this in large, as a larger application in your studio and you want to do really big pieces. Um, but even then I would test it because, you know, um, you don't know until you try. Okay, so let's start with where we left off. We're going to make a couple of these skins. I'd like to maybe do um, the, in, the inclusion piece first. Here we go. So I have some cheesecloth, and what I'm going to do is on the side here, just to keep it simple, I'm going to do my mixture, and then I'm just going to show you how I made that skin. It's really, really simple. Um, not hard at all. Okay, so... What's really interesting, too, is to see how little paint I use to make that, um, that pink skin. Um, right here I have the soft gel mat. Um, you can use any of the gels, really. 
Um, so it could be a heavy gel, it could be a high solid gel, regular gel. It can be a, a pumice gel, which I'll show you in a little bit. So I'm just taking the soft gel mat, knifing it out, a pretty decent amount there. And I am going to take my high flow. Like I said, I wouldn't want to make a skin by itself with high flow, um, but I, it, you know, I can mix it with other things and it works great. So I'm going to mix that, put just really a drop of high flow in here. That's it. That's all I'm using for this skin. And that's all I used on the last one too. Maybe it was two drops. It wasn't much. Yeah, it's probably two drops. So you can see that this is um, very white. And as it dries, I actually put two drops in there to be closer to what I did before. There we go. As this dries, um, this whiteness will clarify and the color will deepen. So when I say I added, I went ahead and added two drops, um, it's probably actually more than what I did the first time because this whiteness of the gel has a little bit of a tinting effect that goes away as that, that gel clarifies. Um, I have such a little amount of color in here, it'll deep, the color will actually deepen. So I'm going to take a little bit of this and just knife it onto my plastic really thin. Um, that's ma mainly so that I can put my inclusion, my cheesecloth, into place and form it the way I want it. And then I can take the remainder of this product knife it on and set it down. Whoops. I'm not going to use that piece. There we go. There we go. And that is it. It's really simple. This will dry. And as that color deepens, it may get closer to this. What's funny is I'm, I really see this so much brighter in person that fluorescent really comes out. There you go. That's what the color really looks like. And I'll show you this as well. That's what it looks like white. <laughs> okay, let's do another one. Very quickly, um, I'm going to show you one of my favorite tricks, and that is using interference colors um, with a skin. So I have a piece that we made a while ago in an event, and I'm looking for it for you guys here. There we go. Um, this is an example of what I'm going to make. Um, so here you have a skin similar to what we just made with a very tiny amount of phthalo blue and cheesecloth. And here we have um, our light orange heavy body with some black that was just made um, as a, just paint only as a skin and cut out. The way that was done is the black was scratched on first and then once that dried, a layer of the orange was put down. And then I had a two-layer skin um, that I peeled up and then cut into a shape. This is similar to what I just did with the teal. I had just a color. And then this is actually our interference blue with a fluid black behind it. And if you look at that interference, you can see how shimmery that is. Um, that interference, when you paint it, with it. It looks like almost nothing. It has like sort of a yellow cast, but what it does is um, when it gets a contrasting color behind it, it pushes out a portion of the spectrum, and this interference blue is pushing out that, that blue portion of the spectrum. And I'm going to show you how to make a skin like that next. Then we'll do a quick uh, demonstration of the clear tar gel with the magenta and move into creating some 3D skins, which is really exciting. Okay, so what I used for this was Interference Blue Fine. Um, as you can see on the swatch here, it looks like nothing. And you can see I went ahead and painted with a brush, just one thin layer, making a mark on the plastic. Now, a fluid like this and a thin layer on the plastic will do something we call reticulating. It'll want to bunch together. But it's okay. I went ahead and let that dry. I wasn't worried about that because you'll see the effect in a moment. Once that dried, I then poured, meaning I just sort of heavy-handedly put down um, the carbon black. Now, I could also use our pouring mediums to create skins. So you could literally create pores and then peel them up from the plastic and use those pores um, as skins. It's a really beautiful effect. 
um, and a wonderful way to use those mediums if you do want to create um, skins. In this case, I didn't add any of the pouring medium. I just used the carbon black and just sort of swiped it uh, with a heavy hand over this. When it dried, um, it's not a real thick um, application of the, of the paint uh, because it is a fluid. The, just the paint itself is not going to um, lay down very thickly. Uh, and I lifted this up before the demo, so I know it will come up. <laughs> um, but the, the effect is really quite beautiful. One thing you should know about acrylics is they are, high, they are sensitive to heat and cold. So if it is quite warm in your space, they might be quite sticky, and you just want to be aware of that. Um, if it is cooler, they can also get hard and sometimes a little bit um, fragile if it's very cold. Um, so just keep that in mind. Right now in here, it's a little bit warm in the studio, so they've gotten a little sticky. Um, but that's not a problem. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So you can see here how that interference blue looks without the contrasting color behind it. And then here it is with the black behind it. And I'm going to go ahead and move this around a little bit so you can see. There we go. How that looks in the light as it shimmers. Nice. Okay, last 2D skin that we're going to make is going to be like this one here, which is the clear tar gel and the uh, quinacridone magenta. While I set up for that, are there any questions? Um, any um, questions? Uh, I do want to say thank you to people who said that the volume was a little low. Oh. Our producer Todd was able to fix that, so thanks yes. for your comments. Oh, thank you. And there was a comment from an artist within the pouring community a little while ago who mentioned that people who do pouring art, you know, do collect the paint that comes off of those canvases and use those for skin. Hey, there you go. See? Absolutely. Yeah, pouring mediums create incredible skins. They're wonderful to, and a great way to reuse your paint. Wonderful suggestion. So I'll make this one quick. It's pretty easy. I just want to show you what the uh, clear tar gel looks like and why so many people love it for skins. Um, the quinacridone magenta is a staining color. It's very intense. We will use just a teeny bit of it um, for this quick demo. Clear tar gel right here. Thick, resinous, wonderful, stretchy, good stuff. And I'm going to take some of that. You can see how that's a little different than the matte gel I just used. This just wants to be very resinous. You can see how it just wants to drizzle. Um, those can make beautiful skins, and you can also lay it flat um, if that's what you want. I'm just going to take this quinacridone magenta and combine it. I can leave it um, sort of less incorporated like this, and what would happen is I would just get areas of more intense color and transparency, or I can continue mixing, and this is all I wanted to show you. I can just take this and create this beautiful resinous sort of, sort of drizzle, and put that all over and let that dry. That will peel up. Uh, you'll have to be careful with that because these very thin areas will be a little delicate, but you can peel that up and utilize that in your work and collage it down. Okay, next. Let's talk about 3D skins and then we'll talk about adhering them. So while you're transitioning, yeah. can you talk about the benefit to having cardboard in the sheet protector? Oh, sure. It does two things. One, I can see what I'm doing. I don't see everything behind it. The second thing is um, when I slide it into the sheet protector, um, it creates a stable background, you know? So what I, what I can do is I can actually, if I'm doing really large skin, I can make sure that I have a nice level table that's nice and even, and I can actually like lay down a huge piece of plastic and do giant skins. And this is just, a, it mimics that need of having just that stable environment. So this is like a little tiny table. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so this for me was kind of that big aha moment when I came to Golden um, a few years back and started playing with the skins and having some fun and thought, oh man, what if we put this in a mold and, and talk to some folks at the residency, our Golden residency here, and they said, hey, we've had artists do that and this is what they did. And I was like, wow, this is amazing, I have to share. So we, I went ahead and made a few little uh, mock-ups to show you just some simple ideas with some 3D skins. And hopefully this will get your creative juices flowing like it did mine. I got very excited about this. So 
you can see all the beautiful different effects you can get using skins for 2D applications, but what happens if I want something with more dimension, more texture? Maybe I want to capture something that already exists. Um, so let's go ahead and look at that. Um, you can actually take a mold of something using silicone and coat the inside of that mold with an acrylic product, then that can actually be peeled out and utilized in your work. And in this case, um, I went ahead and created a mold of half of this uh, black walnut from my yard and coated the inside of that mold with some heavy body yellow ochre. And I'm going to peel that out. And you can see here now I have an acrylic paint film that is a direct cast from that walnut. Now, remember when we looked at the fabric in the skin as a way of sort of giving that skin a little bit more support in a 2D application or where you might stretch it over a form? In this case, this has no support right now. I could collapse this. So what I would probably want to do is after I did my first layer of paint, and this was in the form, after that layer of paint dried, I would increase adding layer by layer either of acrylic product or I've heard of artists, I haven't tried this yet, that would fill this with another sculptural material like a plaster um, to give it support. What I have done is I've used high solid gel, and I'll show you an example of that in a moment. This is a gel that actually has an increased amount of acrylic solids in it and shrinks less than a typical gel. And this can actually help bulk up this uh, piece a little bit so it's stronger. You can also add the fabric in here um, on those, old, those extra layers like we did um, in the, fab, in the uh, other two-dimensional skin. So there's ways to bulk this up. Just don't do it all at once because just like the skins only have one direction to dry, meaning they have the plastic beneath and they must evaporate only from one side, this little guy has kind of less space to dry. It has to evaporate out of the silicone. And the fact that there's a, a, a curve here creates um, a sort of little cup where that humidity will linger longer. So you want to make sure that you don't put too much product in at one time. This is a silicone mold taken from an old piece of furniture that I found in a barn. Um, I thought it was really lovely, and this flower motif is something that I thought would be fun to repeat in a piece of work. So you can see that high solid gel there supporting that piece. This was actually created just by coating it with the heavy body red oxide first, letting that dry, and then putting a thicker coating with a brush of that high solid gel. Once I pull it out of the mold, you can see that flower there. This is all acrylic. So when I go to put this back into my work, it is stable just like my painting. It has all the benefits of a professional acrylic product. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Question. Do you, uh, do you recall what kind of silicone you use? Why, yes, I do. A matter of fact, I have it right here because we are going to make one. All right. So what I happened to use was this product right here. Um, you can see the text on the screen. Um, it's something that I picked up at a local craft store, but any two-part putty, um, any two-part putty uh, silicone mold material should work for you. Um, again, with all the different variations out there, I will always default to testing first, um, but this is a product that's worked for us. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and make a mold, and then I'll show you this cool thing that I've done over here. Well, here, I can actually put these two together just to show you. Once I build up my, the other side of my walnut, <laughs> I can actually put them together to make a completely three-dimensional object if I wanted to. But I'm not there yet. It's still a little thin and flexible. So let's make a mold. I'm going to go ahead and take this mold product right here, combine it, and put it around this other piece that I found in the barn. And let's see if uh, you guys see that all right. Okay. So, two-part putty mold. It's not a product we make, but it certainly is a product we use. Um, I actually might use something a little bigger because I have quite a bit of this putty left, and I'm going to use it all for this demo. So, I um, might use that other piece of furniture. 
It's pretty benign. It feels like Play-Doh if you've never done this before. <laughs> and you just basically take two equal parts, and each manufacturer will have their own directions. Just make sure you follow those directions, and you just combine it. And it gives you enough time to, you know, to do your work. So you got to work fast, but nothing crazy. So you just mix those. They usually make this product in two separate colors. And the reason they do that is so that you can tell when it's combined. So this will all turn, you will, just like mixing paint, you know, it'll all turn one color. You won't see those streaks any longer. Um, keep doing this. Yeah, there we go. All right. So we're getting close. I think I'm going to take a different section of this pretty little carving here. And when I do this, I don't want to try to wrap the entire object. Even though this is a flexible mold and stuff will more than likely come out of that mold, you don't have to worry about things like, you know, like undercuts and whatnot. But you still don't want to wrap it all the way around. So think of this as a relief sculpture. So I'm just going to go ahead and press that silicone mold right over my form. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, <laughs> can't make any promises, but maybe by the end of this demo, this will be stiff enough to remove. They tend to set up pretty fast. And that's it. That's how we did this. It's really simple and uh, gives you a, another vocabulary to incorporate into your work, another set of tools in the toolbox. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, to be able to have those appropriated forms to bring to your acrylic painting is exciting. So here's another one I made. That same barn is falling apart, so the, um, the, the wood and the barn is paper thin, and it's just kind of flying off the roof. See that? Um, I wanted to capture some of that texture, so I made a mold of one of those roof shingles, just really shallow textural mold, and you can see here it really looks like that wood. You really, I really captured the texture of that wood and that, that piece. Um, this is simply micaceous iron oxide, which is a gritty micaceous um, paint that we make, and it's fluid, and I just simply painted it um, with a little bit of a heavy hand into this mold and let it dry. Now I have this piece of acrylic that if I wanted to, I could go in and patina or work with dry brush to try to make it closer to the wood itself. That was not what I was trying to do here. Here I was just sort of feeling it. I wasn't sure what I was doing. But after doing that and this, I know I could get to that if I wanted to. The other thing I did is I, incorpor I went ahead and laid the skin down onto the onto a panel, and what you can't see here is I actually, once the skin was laid down on the panel and adhered with some uh, fluid medium, which I'll show you adhesion in a minute um, for collaging, but what I did here is coated it with several layers of absorbent ground because I wanted to do a test while we were here live on Facebook that I've never done before, and that is to see how it looks with our core watercolor, our water media, and I'm sure this would work with our high flow as well. But I wanted to, you know, absorbent ground is designed for water media. It's, it's absorbent for a reason. Um, it's to, to actually take this type of uh, paint uh, to an acrylic surface. So I'm, I'm going to take this watercolor and I'm going to do a little wash over this skin that has been adhered to a panel and coated with absorbent ground. And I've never done this before, so I'm excited to see what I get. Oh, this is lovely. Oh my goodness. How exciting. I hope, I hope everyone's nerding out with me on this. <laughs> okay, so for me, I see a lot of potential here. I have some ideas on how I might want to use this in the future. That's fun. So that is watercolor on acrylic. And beneath that absorbent ground is a skin that was pulled from a silicone mold. Pretty cool stuff. Okay. So, I like questions. I see how all of this is playing together. Yeah. You know? So, for those of us that work at Golden and do get to experience <laughs> core watercolors and Williamsburg handmade oils and Golden on a daily basis, it's really fun to see it all come together. 
live video. Yeah, it's really neat. And actually, artists in their studios often have so many different media. It's, you know, it's great to be able to see how they, they can all be um, utilized. So I'm going to talk to you quickly about putting the skins down to actually create a collage. So um, once we have all these pieces, we're going to want to create something with them because they're pretty cool. But on their own, you know, they're, they might be incomplete, but not always. So let's go ahead and adhere this little micaceous skin to this panel. Um, what I'm going to use today, because it's what I have on hand, is a little bit of this soft gel mat. Um, you can use just about any gel. You can use paints to adhere. Um, you can use fluid mediums to adhere. It all has to do with the texture and the sheen that you're after. In this case, I like the idea of using a soft gel. Um, because it, it's not so thick, um, even, a, even a, a gloss medium or fluid type medium would be nice here because this is a very thin piece. If I have a sculptural piece like this, I might want to use something that's thicker and more viscous like the high solid gel to adhere it because I may not want to lay it flat. I may want to actually be able to bulk it up and set it into my painting. But in this case, I'm going to use the soft gel mat. Um, what I'm going to do is coat one side of this skin pretty generously. I'm, I'm not going to, it's okay if it oozes out the side when I put it down because I'm actually going to wipe it away and it's matte. Um, and my paper or my surface here is rather matte. It's actually um, gesso, black and white gesso mixed. Um, so I want to retain some of that matteness but I can get rid of the excess when I wipe it. So this still does have a little texture on the back and I will want to fill that a little bit. There we go. So I'm just going to set this in place. And the nice thing is, is it's acrylic on acrylic. I'm not too concerned with, you know, anything being, um, and nothing here is going to be um, incompatible. So sadly, my water has a little of that hooker's green in it, but <laughs> I don't think it'll show up. So I'm just going to set this down. I'm going to take, I could put plastic over this if I really have to work that surface, but in this case, I can just use my hand. And as that medium comes out the edges, I can just wipe it with a damp cloth and remove it. And again, anything white is going to dry clear after it sets up. So. That should be good to go. This is just the medium here. This will dry and it'll work as an adhesive, really holding that piece down into the paint layers. Okay, so that's how we got to this. Um, we did the same sort of thing. Um, we adhered that down with some gel. Same with this. And this piece. And so on. And one more. And there we go as well. So all of these are just stuck together with some medium. Okay, so I think that covers just about everything. There was only one more, one more thing I wanted to show you, and that is just um, for those of you that, you know, I went all the way in the direction of sculpture a little bit here, and we talked about um, paint skins as a collage element for painters, but I do know that some of you really like to draw, and um, Drawing might be more of your thing, or you do incorporate it a lot in your painting. So there's one last thing I want to show you, and then I'll take questions, and then we can, we can call it a wrap. Um, so this is one of my favorite skins. It is made with fine pumice gel. Um, it is a gritty, uh, natural, translucent, um, grayish linen kind of color, um, naturally. Pastel ground is very similar. The uh, the aggregates in the pastel ground just have a little bit longer fiber. They look slightly different. Pastel ground can be a little bit temperamental in a skin. You might want to put it on a little thicker because it tends to be brittle in a thin application. Same with the pumice gel, but it can be done and it's really quite beautiful. So I'm going to show you a skin made from the fine pumice gel and tell you why I love it. Okay, so this is a skin with the fine pumice gel. Again, it's very shiny on the back and very matte on the front. The reason I love this skin is because I get to flip the script when I put this into a painting. I can finish a painting with a drawing, which is something that is kind of uh, the opposite of how maybe we may have been taught. 
this is a picture of my face. Hello. And here is, here is a fine pumice skin laid over and used as a tracing paper. So I can actually work a drawing onto this kind of surface. It's gritty enough to grab and then it's translucent enough to work into the layers in a really unique way. So, you know, I, I like to show this because I feel like it's, it's flipping the script a little bit and it might get some of you to just have some fun. All right, that's the end of this really uh, broad demo. We covered a lot, of, a lot of content today. Do you have any questions, Allison? I do have a couple questions about Super. the surfaces that you were adhering your skin mm -hmm. to. You showed a couple examples. Um, yeah, okay. Gray ones. Could you um, name those? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what I've got here, but then I'll tell you what I recommend. So what I have on screen, Todd, if you want to pop the camera back down, what these are, are these are temporary setups. So these were just made for demos like this, and I really didn't go all the way with this as an art piece. So it's on like a piece of, um, like a piece of cardboard. I would not recommend this. This is not what I would recommend. This is, has a lot of impurities. It'll eventually ruin this. Um, if you wanted to use a paper product, get a heavier board that is actually archival and maybe gesso it a few times to give it some, you know, a barrier between the paper and the acrylic. Um, what would be better if I were to do this in my studio and try to finish this as an artwork is I would work on a panel, a gessoed panel, like a birch pa panel, something that's designed specifically for painting and give it about two to three coats of gesso. And if I wanted a really smooth finish like this on a, on a wood panel like that, I would use our sandable hard gesso um, and give it a few sandings in between. I can get a really super ultra smooth surface. But you can use this in anything that would be appropriate for your painting. So maybe I can use this on paper. I can use this on, um, I can adhere these down to canvas. Um, all of that would work. Um, that was just my personal preference, and the reason I like the panel is I can kind of grind, you know, really hit it and build up, and it's not going to sag like a canvas. So if I wanted to go very thick and get a lot of layers and it gets very heavy, that won't be an issue. But again, that is, that is a personal preference. The gray piece you saw here, um, Todd, if you pop that down again real quick, this is actually a piece of uh, gator board that we use for our demos, again, because we're not really intending for these to be permanent. Um, but this is going to mimic the feel of a panel, and a panel would probably be a better product. You can use plexiglass as a terrific substrate for acrylics um, as well. So anything that's a good acrylic painting substrate um, works for this. Do you have another question, Allison? Um, Kathy is answering one about the best way to cut skins. Um, Ooh. So she's going to pop an answer up in just a moment. But the second part of their question was, can you spray fix the drawing on the pumice skin? Well, I, I would love to hear what Kathy has to say. But I would say that, you know, we, we do advise for fixative. Um, you can use our MSA varnish. Is that right, Kathy? For as like a fixative on a final layer? Archival, okay, our archival varnish, yep, um, as a fixative. So that's something that's an option. Um, on the very final layer of this, if you do have a charcoal drawing like this, yeah, I mean, whatever we would recommend for fixing uh, within a painting, we would recommend for fixing here. So um, you just wouldn't want to work back over that again and build that into your layers as I understand it. But let Kathy give you a little bit deeper answer there. Um, but yeah, you'd want to fix it probably. It'd wipe off. Yeah. Um, any more questions? No, but I would say my final comment on the comments would be that there were really wonderful ideas from viewers who oh, talk great. about using skins in jewelry. And, oh, yes. You know, having great ideas or how they use a cricket machine for cutting. And so it might be fun to check back in the next hour or day or so to see what other ideas people share in the comments and see if that sparks um, some ideas for your own practice. I agree with that 100%. If you couldn't hear Allison, we're just recommending to monitor the comments because really your community of artists here on the page are going to give you some wonderful ideas and advice. And I really, what I wanted to do today is just stimulate that idea machine and just show you some possibilities and, and hopefully get you uh, in that creative frame of mind because when I like I said, when I see this, I just, it's just overwhelming um, uh, potential uh, for creativity in all of these different
products and being able to take that off of a substrate and manipulate it in a new way is exciting. Okay, so thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, don't forget you can reach out to us at any time. Our number's there. Um, also email us at help at goldenpaints.com. Have a wonderful day and enjoy creating. Take care. Bye-bye.